Welcome all to the New York Medical College School of Medicine Class of 2020 Hooding Awards and Military Pinning Ceremony. I am Dr. Jane Ponterio, Senior Associate Dean of Student Affairs. All of our students here today have benefited from kind, caring, and supportive family and friends by their sides. I want to extend on behalf of all of us here at New York Medical College School of Medicine an especially warm welcome to the family and friends who are joining us here today. A special thank you and welcome to all the deans, faculty, and staff who have made such swift adaptations during this pandemic to ensure that our students' education was uninterrupted. Students, your experience is unique. You have been in the midst of global change and you will become a part of history. Nothing about COVID or the fact that we are all here virtually can diminish your success in reaching this day. You are about to start your residency at a time when your help has never been needed more. It has been heartwarming for me to see such enthusiasm and motivation among so many of you. Now, it is natural to feel some apprehension even under usual circumstances, but your many, many hours of training over the past four years of your lives have made you well prepared for what I'm certain will be a challenging yet rewarding career. No matter how prepared you are, however, you will have good days and bad days ahead. Celebrate the good days. Learn from the bad days. Both will serve to make you a better doctor. Our Dean Nadler, along with the faculty, have verified that the graduates we will present have completed all the requirements necessary for the Doctor of Medicine degree. It is fitting then that we continue the academic traditions associated with this prestigious degree. We will bestow a hood, which is a special part of the academic regalia. It is an elongated scarf draped over the graduate's shoulders, decorated with green velvet for the MD degree, as well as the unique maroon and gold colors of New York Medical College on its underside. As you don your hoods, we will be welcoming you into the medical profession. Wear it proudly as it is an insignia of your academic achievement. Look after yourself. Look after each other. Be safe. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be part of New York Medical College's annual awards ceremony. Given the nature of this occasion and the manner in which we find ourselves communicating, I thought that rather than a formal invocation, I might share some thoughts with all of you a little bit more informally. All of our award recipients today share a number of character traits, among them the understanding that hard work and diligence pays off, the pursuit of excellence, caring for humanity, and the maturity and grounding to know that sometimes things don't work out the way we planned or imagined. We all wanted to be together today. After all, we are celebrating, but circumstances dictate that we remain socially distanced, and no one understands the value of adhering to that prescription better than you, men and women of science. But it's not as simple as that. Allow me to suggest from my perspective that there may be a lesson and value in this relatively unique socially distanced award ceremony. The Torah, the Bible teaches us that Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights receiving the law from God on Mount Sinai. When it was finally time for Moses to descend from the mountain, you can imagine the sense of triumph, the atmosphere of celebration, the fanfare that by all rights should have awaited him. Unfortunately, when he came down, it wasn't the type of party that one would call appropriate. In fact, it was a disaster. The tablets were broken. It wasn't a good party at all. 
The second time Moses ascended Mount Sinai was different. The law that Moses delivered was exactly the same. Same God, same Moses, same set of responsibilities. But this time the atmosphere was austere due to the circumstances. And in fact, it was that revelation and those lessons that have endured for millennia. I'm not suggesting that today's awards are akin to receiving the tablets on Sinai, but I'm sure you catch my drift. There's a lesson to be learned and value to be gained from focusing on the outstanding achievements themselves and in recognizing those of you who deserve recognition even without the distractions typically accorded to such occasions. Today, it's not about the bells and whistles. It's about your excellent accomplishments. Congratulations to our award winners. Congratulations to all our graduates and their families. God bless you all. Stay safe and continued success. Greetings to the graduates of the School of Medicine of New York Medical College. About a month before he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, Abraham Lincoln sent a lengthy message to Congress. He wrote in part, the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty. As our case is new, we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves, and then we shall save our country. There is, I suppose, much wisdom in what Lincoln wrote at that time for our current situation regarding a worldwide pandemic and you entering into your careers as young physicians in the midst of this pandemic. Lincoln recommended that our case is new and we must think anew and act anew and disenthrall ourselves. And I suppose what his advice was at that time is in part true for what you will face. We have learned many new things about the healthcare system, about economic disparity, about the impact of disease upon poverty, about the response of political leaders, about the role of expert advice in the midst of this pandemic. And young doctors must, in some ways, think anew. But the key is to adapt to the times while remaining true to the verities which have stood medicine in good stead for centuries. Beneficence, non-malfeasance, equity, justice, decency, professionalism. And that, young doctors, will be your task to balance thinking anew while remaining true to those eternal truths which are the essence of the practice of medicine. I wish you Godspeed on this next stage in your journey. I congratulate all of you upon your graduation and upon the receipts of the awards which will be given out at the ceremony. And I, as I did when you entered medical school four years ago for most of you, I once again wish that you are to, with success and honor, join that long line of women and men in white coats, stretching backward and forward in time, who have devoted their lives to the amelioration of suffering, the relief of pain, and to helping people to the extent possible avoid premature death. I wish you the best on this next stage of your journey, young doctors of the School of Medicine of New York Medical College. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to our first ever virtual hooding awards and pinning ceremony for the 2020 class of the School of Medicine, New York Medical College. I hope you and your families are doing well, and I wish I could be there with you in person to celebrate and offer my congratulations to the class of 2020. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration, we wish to say how proud we all are of you. During this challenging time in our world, it is especially important to thank all of those involved in helping you reach this day. Appreciation goes out to the faculty, the staff, the deans, our alumni, and especially your families 
for support. I want to offer special acknowledgement to Dr. Jane Ponterio, Jonathan Pesolano, Faye Seltzer, and Dr. Jennifer Lindelof for helping to put together this virtual event. Your class has shown very special attributes, including compassion, humanism, resilience, caring, and empathy. All of these virtues, along with medical knowledge gained, will serve you well into residency and beyond as true healers for our population. Your class has recognized, especially in this pandemic, the importance of addressing, addressing ethnic and gender inequalities in our healthcare system. Please take that forward with you as you move into residency. Your class has accomplished so much. We saw a 50% increase in research presentations this year in our research day presentations. We also are very impressed with all of your accomplishments and hope some of you will address the future healthcare needs by making the discoveries to help our population. You will be entering your residencies in both primary care and specialties of your choice at many of the New York Medical College healthcare affiliates, as well as some of the most prestigious institutions in the nation. This was clearly the most successful match in New York Medical College history. Congratulations to our students entering the military programs and celebrating the pinning ceremony today. I especially want to thank Rear Admiral Bruce Gillingham, the Surgeon General of the Navy, for providing the keynote address and participating in the pinning ceremony. Your class has done a fantastic job in organizing virtual events. This includes the AOA Honor Society induction and the Gold Humanism Honor Society induction. The Arnold Gold Foundation actually recently awarded your chapter the outstanding designation, specifically mentioning efforts to support humanism in medicine. Congratulations. Finally, it has been the joy, our joy to see how your class has been stepping up to volunteer for so many programs to help our community and our first line, front line healthcare workers deal with the COVID-19 epidemic. You've truly been an inspiration to us all and we are so proud of your dedication and accomplishments. I will end with a, a quote from, a recent quote from the director of the World Health Organization. May the spirit of human solidarity become more infectious than the coronavirus. Brighter days are ahead, and I'm truly confident and proud to call you doctors of medicine. We wish you all the best, and you always will be part of New York Medical College family. Godspeed. Congratulations, class of 2020. You showed us how amazing you are as a class by initiating and executing all those volunteer opportunities. I wish you the very, very best that life has to offer. Thank you. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm so in awe of your tremendous achievements and your tremendous dedication. Um, you've inspired me, especially most recently with your generosity and the care that you've shown each other and that you've shown our entire community. This certainly leaves New York Medical College a better place than you when you arrived. These past four years have been such a privilege for me to serve as your clerkship direct, director and as a mentor and advisor for many of you. You've truly touched my heart and I have no doubt that you will all pass it forward. I'm so very grateful and I wish you all the best. It's been my pleasure serving as your clerkship director. Have a wonderful career, have a wonderful life. All the best. So to the class of 2020, as my first FCM class, you will always hold a special place in my heart. I welcome you as my newest colleagues and wish you all the best as you continue on your journey. Stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, congratulations. Congratulations uh, to everyone on this awesome occasion. I'm very, very happy for you. I wish you all much continued success in the future and don't forget your microbiology and immunology. Congratulations, class of 2020, wishing you all the best. To the graduating class of 2020, I wish you all the best. The word that I wanna give it to you as a gift on your graduation day is the word of integrity. Integrity means that you always will do what's necessary and what's right without anybody watching you. I think you learned so much. I think you are ready. I love you. I'm going to miss you. And you are the best class ever. Good luck.
Congratulations, class of 2020. You are an unprecedented class, and this has been an unprecedented year. I wish we could be together, but I am so proud of all of you for all that you have done in the last several months and in the last four years. Thank you for all you've taught me and all that you've done to help support oh. your fellow classmates. We are so grateful to you. We hope that you'll come and visit us often, and we love you very much, and we wish you all the best in your future careers and are grateful for your service to the community. To the outstanding class of 2020, friends, families, and colleagues, I am Susan Racklin, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. I am so proud and honored to be presenting the Medical School Awards to the graduating class, along with Joanna Pesolano, the OBGYN Clerkship Director and Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. Although this is not how you all envisioned ending your time here at New York Medical College, the perseverance and dedication you have shown truly demonstrates what outstanding physicians each and every one of you will become. We are so proud of all of you, all you have accomplished, as well as what you will accomplish in the years to come. You are entering medicine at a time that is unprecedented. The skills you have learned related to medicine, humanism, and compassion will serve you well as you embark on the next phase of your medical journey. We wish you all the best, and it is now my pleasure to present the awards for academic excellence. The first award is the William Cullen Bryant Award, established in honor of William Cullen Bryant, our college founder, presented to Jennifer Lindelof. The Dr. and Mrs. David Harrison Scholarship Awards, established by Dr. David Harrison, a 1921 graduate of New York Medical College, in recognition of the students who have achieved the three highest academic standings, graduating first in the class, Michelle Hertzberg, graduating second in the class, Eleanor Sidney Burstein, graduating third in the class, Patrick Kennedy. The Samuel Spiegel MD Memorial Award recognizes Dr. Spiegel, a distinguished New York Medical College surgeon for 60 years and is given to a student with an outstanding academic record. This year's recipient is Michelle Hertzberg. There are two awards for excellence in the field of anesthesia. The Joseph G. Jafrida MD and Dante V. Bazzari MD Memorial Scholarship Award Lauren Locke. The Bruce D. Halperin, MD, Memorial Award, Amy Hirschberger. The Department of Emergency Medicine Award, Sarah Beth Spiegel. The Society for Academic Emergency Medicine Award, Rachel Sarah Bubbly. The Betsy Z. O'Neill Award, for Excellence in Family Medicine, Katherine Matthew. The Department of Medicine Academic Award, Kenneth Guber. The Johanna P. Hagedorn, PhD Scholarship Award. This award is given to a second year medical student who expresses concern and understanding for fellow students in a manner exemplary of a sincere and caring physician. Savan Shahar. The Eileen H. Pike PhD Memorial Award in Microbiology, Beth Motel. The Department of Neurology Academic Award, Alexandra Nee and Alicia Brady. The Martin L. Stone MD Award for Excellence in Obstetrics and Gynecology, Amethyst Sultani. The Department of Orthopedic Surgery Award, Eleanor Burstein. The Maurice Black MD Memorial Award for Excellence in Pathology and Pathophysiology, Beth Motel. The Department of Pathology, Victor Cherkoff MD Memorial Award, Patrick Kennedy. The Lance A. Parton, MD, and Patricia A. Galvin Parton, MD, Pediatrics Research Award, Yuritsi Ostaleo. 
the Lawrence P. Slow Body MD Award for Excellence in Pediatrics, Dana Green. We have here two awards for excellence in the field of psychiatry. The Gita Das MD Memorial Award, Cara Fleming. The Stephen P. Jewett MD Memorial Award, Evra Khan. The next three awards are for excellence in the field of surgery. <clears throat> The Bentevegna Family Scholarship Award, Donna Ku. The Lewis R. M. Del Gercio Surgical Society Award, Nell Weber. The Wilfred F. Ruggiero, MD, Memorial Scholarship Award, Julia Rosenberg. The Department of Urology, Joseph Adnizio, MD, Memorial Award. Bronin Long and Ju Lee. The Sprague Carlton, MD, Award for Excellence in Urology, Jennifer Lindelof. The Department of Anesthesia Academic Award, Ann Norris. The Frank L. Pollock, MD, Research Award in Medicine, Matthew Capiston and Leora Busi. The Department of Neurosurgery Academic Award, Matthew McIntyre. The Westchester Neuroscience Research Foundation Award, Ilya Ripkin. The Rita F. Girolamo MD Award in Radiology honors the late Rita F. Girolamo and alumna of New York Medical College, Patrick Kennedy. It is now my honor to present the recognition awards. The first two awards are for outstanding service and dedication to New York Medical College. The Alumni Association Citation Award to Jennifer Lindelof. The Alumni Endowed Scholarship Award to Catherine Carome and Jessica Rowe. The Joan P. Lyman MD and Stacey A. Simons MD, also known as the Better Late Than Never Award, is presented to a graduate who after endeavors in another career has chosen to enter the field of medicine. And this year's recipient is Yacinth Paraka Marira. The Phelps Leadership and Community Service Awards are given to gradu a graduating medical student who demonstrated commitment to leadership in primary care, Jessica Rowe. The Board of Trustees Award is given to graduates who through inner strength and determination have succeeded in overcoming unusual difficult challenges in their course of earning a medical degree. And this year there are two recipients, Cassandra Arazo and Jennifer Arana Vasquez. The Caduceus Scholarship Award is presented to a graduate who has a passion for primary care and is presented to Abel Suarez Mazon. The James Matthew Haggadis Good Physician Award honors the School of Medicine graduate who in addition to exhibiting academic achievement has demonstrated those special intangible qualities of compassion, sensitivity, intuition, and independence of spirit and intellect that make a doctor the good physician. It is an award that is chosen by his or her peers, and this year's recipient is Catherine Carome. The Mary Hawkins McAteer MD 75 Memorial Scholarship Award honors the late Mary Hawkins McAteer, an ophthalmologist who provided care to the indigent populations in Central America and Africa. This award is presented to a graduate who honors her work, and it is presented to Daisy Quende. The Charlotte D. Udell, MD, Class of 33 Memorial Award um, recognizes a woman in the graduating class who best exemplifies the dedication, pioneering spirit of Dr. Udell, and this year's recipient is Euritzia Stadio. The Outstanding Peer Tutor Award is given to Catherine Carome and Ruchi Marcus Fu. We will now recognize students who have provided outstanding service contribution to New York Medical College. The first award is the Citation for Outstanding Community Service and is given to Jennifer Lindelof, Ruchus Marcus Fu, and Catherine Carome. The final award 
is the Core at Manus Excellence in Leadership and Community Service Award, which is presented annually to graduating medical students who have demonstrated extraordinary leadership and service to New York Medical College. However, during these very, very trying times, some of which we've just never seen and will probably never see in medicine again, our students, all our students, have gone above and, be above and beyond to donate their time, and we will recognize students of all four classes. Receiving the Core at Manus Award from the class of 2023 is Eliana Jacobson, Lior Levy, and Raj Kumar Pamel. From the class of 2022, we recognize and thank Matthew Holstein, Ruby Patel, Alessandra Piscina, and Carly Rowe. From the class of 2021, we recognize and thank Ibrahim Afshinaku, Jesse Honed, Andrew Long, Ariana Matz, Maria Mulligan Buckmiller, Matthias Palmer, Nicholas Sanchez, Philip Sang, Navina Sunkara, Bertie Zhang, and Suyu Zhang. And finally, from the class of 2020, the graduates who have just gone above and beyond in providing service to New York Medical College, we thank you and honor Yuritzia Stadio, Michael Blotner, Bevan Van Home, Leora Busi, Eleanor Burstein, Catherine Carome, Brianna Evans, Ruchi Marcus Fu, Reed Goodman, Dana Green, Kenneth Guber, Irva Khan, Donna Ku, Jessica Learn. Jennifer Lindelof, Abanithi Mittal, Sophie Nikolic Henkin, Evelyn Orlando, Jessica Rowe, Ilya Ripkin, Sarah Spiegel, Giovanna Verutza, Akshita Yarabatula, Kaysen Yao. Hello, my name is Jennifer Lindelof and I'm president of the School of Medicine Student Senate. It is my honor and privilege to present the following awards on behalf of the Student Senate in the class of 2020. First, I'd like to present the Student Senate Certificates of Appreciation. Every year, the Student Senate designates five members of the New York Medical College community who have gone above and beyond in their dedication to the student body. These individuals have given their time and put all of their energy into making the st sure the student experience runs smoothly. From ironing out kinks in the curriculum to supporting students outside of the classroom, this is an incredibly special group of people. We appreciate everything that they do for us, and NYMC is a better place because of their actions. We are thrilled to honor them today and look forward to many more years of collaboration. Our first award is to Juan Castro, a member of the information technology team who has been absolutely essential over the past few months of distance learning. Thank you for being amazing and juggling all that you do. No one knows how you can possibly fix all of our technical glitches while so many classes are happening simultaneously. You and your team have made it possible for us to learn from home before and during this pandemic. We cannot share our appreciation enough for your flexibility and ability to help us out with all of our technical issues. Next, we would like to recognize the facilities team. Thank you for all the work you do. Every day you bring smiles to our faces just by saying hello. You're such a vital part of our school team, and I hope you know how much joy you bring to the students. Thank you for making sure that even when we are stressed, we have a wonderful, bright, clean place to study. Next, we recognize Dr. Jennifer Kessler, Senior Associate Dean for Medical Education. Dr. Kessler's impact on the New York Medical College community is immeasurable because so much of it comes from her encouragement and promotion of humanism and compassion in medicine. Her constant drive to support students and enable them is remarkable. Deans and faculty like her really affirm my decision to come to New York Medical College because she is such a role model as both an educator and as a humanistic physician. Thank you for always being able to lend an ear, hold our hand, and give us advice. You are such an amazing, calming presence on campus, and we are so grateful to have someone who works so hard to give us the best experiences possible. You treat us like family, and having that love and support makes this journey so much more enjoyable. Next, we recognize Dr. Pamela Ludmer, Associate Dean for Curriculum Integration in the School of Medicine. In challenging times for preclinical education, Dr. Ludmer has been an integral part of ensuring a smooth transition to virtual learning. She's been extremely accessible to students in these uncertain times and has been very receptive to student concerns. Thank you for sharing updates with us as soon as you have them. 
Thank you for keeping our anxieties in check by sharing with us what we know and what is truly uncertain. You have helped us so much in these times of crisis and it is a blessing to have you there advocating for us and helping us navigate through these challenging times. Finally, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jerry Nadler, Dean of the School of Medicine. Having a student-centered Dean like Dr. Nadler at the helm of our medical school is truly a blessing. I think we all appreciate his commitment to research and expanding opportunities for students to engage in scholarly work. But it's especially uplifting to know that he has the students' best interests at heart and will go out of his way to connect and advocate for us. Thank you for joining the New York Medical College community and making such an incredibly positive impact in your first year. You've taken the time to get to know us and truly care about providing us with the best possible experience. Your energy and passion are contagious and we could not be more grateful to have that positive energy as the school and the world goes through this transition. Also, thank you for sharing not only your passions, but those of your wife. It's great to be at a school where community is not only the people that have the NYMC badge, but also the people who support them. Under your leadership, Dr. Nadler, I'm confident that NYMC will achieve new heights and establish a strong identity amongst the fantastic medical schools in the New York area. Good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Colin Smith, and I'm a medical officer in the Commission Corps of the United States Public Health Service. I'm here on behalf of the Surgeon General of the United States to recognize an outstanding student from New York Medical College who has been selected to receive the 2020 Excellence in Public Health Award Public Health Service was founded in 1798 to provide medical care to sailors and merchant seamen with yellow fever and malaria. Over the subsequent 220 years, our mission has broadened to deliver health promotion and disease prevention programs to all people. Today, the Commission Corps of the Public Health Service is dedicated to serving on the front lines in the nation's fight against disease and poor health conditions. On behalf of the U.S. Public Health Service, I would like to recognize Mr. Ibrahim Afshaneku, with the 2020 Excellence in Public Health Award. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to public health. We hope you consider a career in the U.S. Public Health Service. Next, I'd like to present the Faculty Awards for Excellence in Teaching and Mentorship on behalf of the Class of 2020. The Student Faculty Awards for Excellence in Teaching and Mentorship is given by the Class of 2020 to faculty members, deans, and administrators that exemplify the best of New York Medical College. Some of the kind words said about the individuals nominated this year include, he made my decision to apply into surgery an easy one. I was amazed that he had even given out his phone number so that we could call and discuss our applications and how to begin tackling the match process. He helped me understand my own strengths and weaknesses and made my fourth year a lot smoother. More than that, he was reassuring and kind and showed me that not all surgeons have that surgical personality. Another quote, he is one of the warmest and most caring physicians and clerkship directors that I've had the privilege of working with. It is so clear that he really cares about all of his students. While completing residency applications and throughout the interview season, he went out of his way to reach out to everyone applying in his field to check in and see how he could help. He was so genuinely happy for all of us after match day, and I know that he is a professor I will keep in touch with long after graduating New York Medical College. Another, not only are we knowledgeable because of her course, we know how much work she and the faculty put into courses each year. She's a friendly face and always happy to help provide extra assistance to students. Thank you for all the effort you have put into making our education complete. Another, she is an inspiring figure who is 110% committed to resident and medical student education. The way she interacts with patients is awe-inspiring, and I hope to have a great physician like her one day. Her passion for teaching is unmatched through New York Medical College. She is always available for students and goes out of her way to make sure they are having the best possible experience throughout their rotation. In clinic and during lectures, she makes sure to explain things until they are clear to every student. It is obvious that she truly cares about the students and wants us all to become compassionate and competent clinicians. And lastly, my fourth year would not have been possible without her. From coordinating the details of my schedule to helping secure away rotations, she is an absolutely essential member of the student affairs team and we are so lucky to have her. The award winners for preclinical faculty are Dr. Jan Galipter, 
Dr. Ken Larea. Dr. Stephen Moshman. Dr. Christina Peterson. Dr. Matthew Pravitz. For the clinical faculty, the award winners are Dr. Vincent Blood, Dr. Roger Chirugi, Dr. Carol Carmen, Dr. Lydia Klepach, Dr. Krisha Nulis, Dr. Joanna Pesolano, Dr. Susan Racklin, Dr. Gary Stallings, Dr. Ray Witt, and Dr. Elizabeth Zellner. And finally, for deans and administrators, the award winners are Dr. Susan Racklin, Melanie Rodriguez, and Dr. Gary Stallings. The final award I will be presenting today is the Robert Goldstein Award to Dr. Susan Racklin. This honor is awarded to a faculty member who has won the Excellence in Teaching and Mentorship Award for a minimum of 10 years, although this year's award winner has won the award every year since she joined the faculty in 1996. She wears many hats and all of them extremely well, from lectures during the preclinical years to her trademark diagnostic medicine and radiology course. Her role as Associate Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Racklin is a cornerstone of the New York Medical College experience. Dr. Racklin works tirelessly for students, filling up every minute of every day to speak with students about academics, residency, or their personal lives. Not a moment goes by, even when she's teaching radiology, where she isn't on the phone with a student or about a student advocating on their behalf. No one is a fiercer advocate for student well-being. She has been an extraordinary role model and has certainly shaped the class of 2020's experience through medical school. It is my privilege to present this year's award to Dr. Susan Racklin. Dear class of 2020, I wish you all the best uh, uh, and good luck going forward. You're joining our profession at a time of tremendous challenge, but also tremendous opportunity. And I have do no doubt that you will do really well. Thank you for the privilege of being your teacher and advisor, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2020. We are exceedingly proud of you. Um, I know from the very beginning, you guys were eager to get out there and work. Uh, lo and behold, in 2020, you guys were the, probably the first class we've seen able to get out there and start working um, right away. Um, you, guys, you guys are hitting the ground running. I'm exceedingly proud. Uh, to see how many of you have stepped up uh, to go out there and join the fight, uh, which is what you actually signed up for uh, in medicine. Before we're any kind of specialist, whether you're going into neurology, OBGYN, surgery, uh, ophthalmology, whatever it might be, first you are a physician. Um, and right now we're seeing all hands on deck um, and everyone has a role to play uh, in this response. So again, we wish you well, congratulations, and looking forward to seeing, uh, hearing from you all in the future. Good luck. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We are so proud of you and we wish you all the best. May you continue to be resilient and pave the way for the future. Have an amazing future. A great woman once said, patients do not put their trust in machines or devices. They put their trust in you. In this unprecedented time in medicine in your career, never lose your moral compass. I'm honored to be able to wish you the best of luck in all your endeavors. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Dear class of 2020, I know this is not what you expected for your ceremony. Normally there will be many hugs and congratulations flowing around. Today I just want to congratulate all of you and to send you all a virtual hug. I wish you all a great career and fulfillment of all your professional and personal wishes. Congratulations class of 2020. 
in these difficult times, you will always be a special class to us. On behalf of the faculty and the faculty governance, I wish you all the best. And again, congratulations. Class of 2020, congratulations on your New York Medical College School graduation. We were all very proud of what you have accomplished these past four years, especially how you have all risen to the top during these very difficult past few months. You will all make outstanding physicians. I look forward to working with you as colleagues and as alumni. I wish you all the best of luck in all your future endeavors. Congratulations, good luck, and stay safe. Hello to the class of 2020. My name is Dr. Charles Episala, class of 1988. I am president of the School of Medicine Alumni Association Board of Governors, and I am honored to be addressing you today, our future alumni and newest members. Your class has been through so much in these last couple of months. Your lives have been turned upside down in some way or another from the coronavirus pandemic. However, all that you have achieved to get where you are today only shows your resilience, your strength, and your spirit. As future doctors, many of you will join colleagues on the front lines of this global pandemic and will be in direct contact with the patients whose lives depend on you. With all that you have overcome and through your perseverance, there is no doubt that each one of you will be amazing physicians and much valued alumni. I would like to give you some brief but important history of your alumni association. In the early days of New York Medical College, there was no cohesive unit of alumni, and essentially there was no alumni association. It wasn't until 1883 when a group of New York Medical College graduates came together to form an alumni organization through the state of New York. Then, in 1946, that organization was incorporated and formed to what is now officially known as the School of Medicine Alumni Association of New York Medical College. Today, the Alumni Association consists of a 16-member Board of Governors and over 10,000 alumni. I am proud to be a member of the Alumni Association, its Board of Governors, and its 137-year history. And most importantly, I know you will feel the same way. As alumni, you will exemplify what it means to be a unified foundation, a faction of many who represent one body. You will one day be leaders in your chosen specialty. You will be role models and mentors to the next generation of students and will pay your good deeds forward by promoting and participating in the advancement of our alma mater and uniting in the growing foundation of the Alumni Association. It is only through the support of dues generously given by the alumni that we are able to provide scholarships, sponsor student events, provide mentoring for students, and ultimately supporting our alma mater. To recognize you, to honor you, and to welcome you into the family of the Alumni Association of New York Medical College, we, the Alumni Association Board of Governors, will be presenting each of you with your official Alumni Association certificate, which will be mailed to you soon. I hope you will frame and display your certificate proudly and recognize all that you have and will continue to accomplish. In addition, the Alumni Association will be waiving in full your first year's dues in light of this unprecedented pandemic, an immense challenge facing us all as physicians. The Alumni Association's main and ongoing purpose is to be there for the New York Medical College students and support them in any way we can. We sincerely hope you keep in touch with us and continue your support as you begin your careers. Since I have been president of the Alumni Association, I have tried to reinforce an important message to each graduating class that I hope you will carry forward and remember, and that is, it's okay to give back. On behalf of the entire Alumni Association of New York Medical College, congratulations and all the best as you begin the next chapter of your lives. God bless you and stay safe, thank you. I'm so honored to be speaking to you on this strange day. In the past two months, the phrase I've seen most frequently on social media is some variation on, this isn't the blank I expected, as in, this isn't the match day or graduation or wedding I expected. So it would be easy to start the speech with, well, this isn't the hooding ceremony speech that I expected. Of course, there are superficial differences. 
like the fact that I'm recording this in advance, leaving me no opportunity to go rogue at the last second. It's also weird not to have an audience to react to. It's giving me newfound empathy for the professors whose classes I watched on Camtasia all through first and second year. I would like at this time to issue a blanket apology to all faculty on behalf of the entire student body. Although I promise that I laughed at all your jokes in the privacy of my own home. And for everyone watching now, I don't mind if you put me on 1.5 times speed. But what I have to say to you is pretty similar to what I might have wanted to say six months ago. Because what strikes me about the COVID-19 pandemic is how it's been, in some ways, exactly what we might have expected. A poorly funded public health infrastructure was ill-equipped to respond to a novel threat. COVID deaths have been concentrated in poor neighborhoods. Black and brown people are both more likely to contract the virus and more likely to die from it. Essential workers risk their lives to show up to low paying jobs while the privileged among us join Zoom calls. I don't think anyone in medicine could honestly say that in the United States in 2020, we couldn't have expected this. The disinvestment and disparities are not shocking aberrations within our system. They are our system. I'm hopeful that this pandemic spurs us to do something about health injustices and systemic weaknesses. Not some general us, I mean us literally. New York Medical College MD class of 2020. And I hope we advocate on behalf of ourselves and our colleagues as well. During this crisis, many doctors and other healthcare workers have found themselves working in dangerous settings with inadequate personal protective equipment and little support from their leadership. This is surely not the case in every hospital. Yet I've heard that a lot of physicians feel like, instead of being valued for their work, they're treated as replaceable, like any cog in any machine. Many feel powerless, like they're on their own. It doesn't come naturally for doctors of the world to unite. From Dr. Halperin's class, I'm sure we all remember Rudolf Virchow, which is apparently how you pronounce Virchow, the most influential pathologist in medical education until Hussein Sitar. Born in 19th century Germany, Virchow was a brilliant researcher and teacher who basically invented several of our preclinical classes, cell biology and pathology for a start. Virchow was also a political reformer who fought for the health of the poor and vulnerable in German society. In 1848, his community was ravaged by an epidemic. In that time, it wasn't COVID, but typhus, bacterial infection spread by lice, and thus associated with crowded housing. Virko argued that the only way to stop and prevent typhus epidemics was not just to treat individual patients, but to embark on, quote, a revolutionary program of social reconstruction. For this and similar ideas, his hospital fired him. But, those ideas helped shape public health in Europe and beyond for the next two centuries. He's obviously right about typhus, as evidenced by the fact that many people here have never heard of typhus, that you prevent it not by handing out a few new blankets, but with radical changes in housing policy. And as it happens, he was soon reinstated by his hospital. Dr. Virko summarized his views as follows. Medicine is a social science and politics is nothing more than medicine on a grand scale. To me, the following questions, though often underpinning political debates about healthcare, are not political questions. Fundamentally, is healthcare a human right? Or is it more of a luxury good, like a handbag or a sports car? Who deserves healthcare? Is someone more or less deserving of health because of their skin color, perceived ancestral continent, primary language, life partner, income, luck in where they were born? Should all children be given a healthy and equitable start in life? Should that equity and health continue once those children turn into adults? If not, when do deserving children become undeserving adults? To me, these aren't political questions, these are moral questions. And although we aren't graduating with doctorates of philosophy, excepting a few overachievers in the crowd, now that we have the letters MD after our names, our opinions on matters of health, including these moral questions, suddenly carry more weight with policymakers as well as the general public. We have more power than we think. The Nobel laureate Toni Morrison, who was descended from people forced into slavery, who grew up in the Jim Crow era, who went to Howard and Cornell and taught at Princeton, who became one of the better writers to ever work in the English language, once said, I tell my students, 
When you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. Medical students are not used to being told that they have some power, any power. For two years, their lives revolve around multiple choice exams. Then, when they excitedly enter the hospital as fresh-faced M3s, they are slowly transformed into compliant future doctors, another generation subjected to the hidden curriculum. And their lives also still revolve around multiple choice exams. Worse, medical students witness patient suffering, sometimes in ways that are avoidable. We see callousness, we see inequity, we see harm and suffering and death. We learn quickly to accept the situation. This is temporary after all. Soon, we'll graduate. We'll be real doctors. We won't do the things that some people above us in the hierarchy have passed down. We'll be different, we'll be better. It's about as realistic as vowing as teenagers that we'll never turn into our parents. Although, if my mom is any example, we should all be so lucky. As medical students, we were tired but as residents, we'll be pushed to our limits. And we may end up feeling more powerless than ever. After all, the average New York Medical College graduate is sitting here today with an above average six-figure student loan on their shoulders. If we were to fight for too much change for ourselves or our colleagues or our patients, then like Virco, we could lose our jobs and thus our ability to make IBR payments. So we may be tempted to keep our heads down to do what good we can for individual patients, but refrain from making waves. We'll be different when we're attendings, after all. Then we'll have power. Then we'll change things. We'll never turn into those doctors. But when we graduate residency after a minimum of 11,000 hours in the hospital, we'll be exhausted. We'll plan to make changes later, but first, we'll take a breath. We'll finish paying off our loans. We'll get that first author publication, that department chair position, that brass ring. If we're not careful, we may leave residency and eventually retire from medicine saying, this isn't the doctor I expected to be. I completed my third year surgery rotation at a hospital in the poorest, roughest neighborhood in Brooklyn. I saw a lot of suffering in that hospital. And although at first it jolted me, soon I began to accept it. I could feel my empathy scarring over like a granuloma, something I had to wall off in order to survive. I think that rotation is when I first began to feel like a doctor. I don't think these things were unrelated. It was the dead of winter, so I drove to 6 a.m. rounds in pitch blackness, and 12 hours later, drove home long after sunset. Every time I cruised down the local roads, I hit uneven pavement, especially on one road studded with potholes I never managed to avoid. Typical of the under-maintained roads in this destitute neighborhood, I figured. What did I expect? I learned to accept this as simply what happens in our world in poor neighborhoods. I didn't even try to change my route. I guess Brooklyn roads are just awful. Nothing I can do about that. Then one bright morning, I drove home in the daylight for the first time after an overnight shift. And I saw that what I'd taken as just another terrible thing to accept weren't potholes. They were speed bumps. This isn't a perfect metaphor because what we may be tempted to accept in residency and beyond aren't speed bumps. They're more like sinkholes, which we are urged to just drive around for now. But my hope is that we recognize that even as residents, we do have some freedom. We do have some power. We can choose to accept things as they are, as we've come to expect them to be, or we can free somebody else. Thank you. Hello, I'm Neil Clare, Associate Dean of Diversity and Inclusion. And on behalf of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, I'd like to wish the class of 2020 congratulations and all the best in their future careers. I'm very proud of you. Dear Branch House and the class of 2020, um, you've weathered a lot of challenges over the last four years and have risen remarkably to the challenges of the last four months. We're so proud of you and we wish you all the best in the years to come. You're joining the most noble of professions and I couldn't be happier for you all. Congratulations on all your hard work and best wishes on all that's to come in the next weeks, months, and years. Godspeed. 
Dear class of 2020 and the doctors of the future, I am so proud of all you have accomplished. It has been my esteemed honor and pleasure to work with each and every one of you. I know you will all have outstanding careers and I wish you all the very best. I wish you health, happiness and success in the future. And please know you always have a home here at New York Medical College. All the best in your future. Class of 2020, congratulations. There is a saying in medicine, hindsight is 2020. And as you look back at your medical school career, I hope you remember besides the challenges and the hardships that you've overcome, that you remember your accomplishments, your successes, all of the relationships you've created with faculty, with classmates, with patients. I'm confident as you move forward, you'll continue your compassionate care of patients. I hope you do this with your wonderful sense of humor and your humanism. And as you continue to grow and succeed, I hope you cherish your personal accomplishments and celebrate your professional successes. So congratulations, class of 2020. I'm very proud of you. And uh, I hope we keep in touch. Hello, class of 2020. Congratulations on making it to graduation. I know it's been a crazy time. Um, I'm proud of all of you. I want you to remember to be able to reach out to me or anyone in the college whenever you need in the future. And we will always be here for you. Enjoy your summer and be safe. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to share remarks with you on this joyous day one that culminates several years of hard work and dedication, but more importantly, the beginning of your professional career. To start, I'd like to thank a few individuals. Dr. Alan Kaddish, President of the Truro College System. Dr. Edward Halperin, Chancellor of New York Medical College. Rabbi Moshe Krupka, Executive Vice President and University Ombudsman of the Truro College and University System. Dr. Jerry Nadler, Dean of New York Medical College School of Medicine, and Dr. Mel Etten, Associate Dean of Student Affairs and a Navy Reservist who has been selected for the rank of Captain and who volunteered to come on active duty to join his Navy colleagues on the front line of the COVID-19 fight. Thank all of you for what you do to uphold and build on the tradition of excellence in medicine. Graduates, family, faculty, and honored guests, I'm honored and humbled to be able to speak with you on this special occasion. Graduates, today you join the medical profession in the midst of an unparalleled crisis and you'll be tested from the moment you walk on the ward to start your residencies. You'll link arms with and learn from battle-tested colleagues who will take you under their wings, share their hard-won knowledge, and mentor you as you take your rightful place in the medical hierarchy. You have earned this opportunity, and I wish you every success. As you begin this journey, I'd like to share some hard-won insights from my career in the hope that they will be of value as you pursue your professional dreams. When I was in elementary school, my father was an anesthesiologist at Naval Hospital San Diego. As a special treat, my two older brothers and I would join him for Sunday dinner in the galley and then go to observe him in the operating room. While I was interested in what he was doing to anesthetize his patients, I was fascinated by what was happening on the other side of the anesthesia curtain. To this day, he reminds me that as an orthopedic surgeon, I ended up on the wrong side of the blood-brain barrier. To my father, a great day in the OR was one in which he was paired with surgeons who had just returned from Vietnam. He would describe how much more efficient his day was, that the surgeons were confident and decisive without being arrogant. They operated with an economy of movement without taking unsafe shortcuts, and they were true team players, working with the rest of the staff to provide the best possible care I internalized this and it is a model I have always sought to emulate, which leads me to my first and really the only point I wish to make. An individual can make a difference, but only a team can make a miracle. Your aptitude, intelligence, and hard work have prepared you to make a profound difference in the lives of your future patients. But you will be most successful if you learn to build and lead effective teams. The current pandemic has only highlighted the importance of this skill. I'll share a few examples from my career so that you can understand why I believe this so strongly and to highlight why you should as well. As I've progressed in my career, I realized that 
my ability to identify and develop the capabilities of others was a fundamental strength. This has proven to be an extremely valuable asset as a surgeon and a medical leader. I've found that using this skill for the benefit of others has brought me tremendous personal satisfaction and a big reason why participating on high performance teams is a source of true joy for me and frankly, while I'm still in the Navy. During the early days of the Iraq War, I was deployed as the officer in charge of a far forward naval surgical unit situated in the Sunni Triangle, midway between the volatile cities of Ramadi and Fallujah. Deploying to Iraq linked me to the Vietnam era surgical legacy my father so admired and underscored the unique nature of our mission in military medicine. This realization hit me like a lightning bolt in the middle of a long night in Iraq during the second invasion of Fallujah by the Marines and other supporting forces. In the midst of sustained mass casual operations, I was standing in the tent that was our post-anesthesia care unit, writing a post-op note, tossing down a quick cup of coffee, when I looked up long enough to witness what can only be described as a symphony of movement. Every member of that team, from the most junior corpsmen, many no more than 19 or 20 years old, up to a fellow captain, one of our general surgeons, was quietly and expertly carrying out their duties. A patient whose open tibia fracture I had just stabilized with an external fixer was carried by litter into the PACU tent, where a 23-year-old nurse stood ready to receive and comfort him. Recently triaged preoperative patients were brought into our staging area, where a newly graduated nurse anesthetist and her colleague, our only anesthesiologist, calmly and reassuringly prepared them for surgery while the OR techs quickly did their room to turnover so that we could rapidly get back to performing damage control procedures, doing just enough to stabilize these badly injured patients so that they could be transported by marine helicopters in the care of our nurses to the combat surgical hospital in Baghdad. You might think all of this action would be chaotic, but in fact, other than the loud mechanical roar of our generators, it was very quiet and everyone moved as if they'd been choreographed. In fact, what I was watching was perhaps the best example of teamwork I've ever been a part of and was a reflection of our strategy of identifying and asking everyone to play to their strengths and to work at the top of their skill set. Another example worth sharing will help explain how we were able to achieve this level of teamwork. We were blessed to have Chief Susie Duggar as part of our team. Chief Petty Officers are senior Navy enlisted personnel whose job it is to lead our more junior enlisted, but as you will see, they're often the heart and soul of a, a Navy unit. Chief Duggar, who was assigned as an independent duty corpsman, a hospital corpsman with an additional year of intensive medical training to prepare them to work as the sole medical provider in our smaller ships, had virtually no experience in treating complex trauma patients, and frankly, was a little overwhelmed if asked to jump in and do an assessment of one. Her strength was management of people. We discovered this during our first mass casualty when five Marines who had been riding in a Humvee struck by an IED arrived with no notice. While the general surgeons and I did initial triage, she instantly recognized that our small team was in danger of becoming shorthanded and rapidly assembled a group of bystanders to pitch in. Personally assigning them to the myriad of non-medical tasks required to care for this sudden influx of severely wounded casualties so that the medical personnel could focus on patient care. Thank goodness we didn't focus on remediating her trauma skills, but put her in a position to exercise her true strengths, strengths that turned out to be of much greater value to our team than having her work as an IDC full-time. She was the puppeteer that pulled the strings, allowing our 45-person unit with two ORs and four surgeons to handle an almost constant flow of casualties during the 10-day invasion of Fallujah, using every resource available to keep the patients moving keep us fed, hydrated, and when possible, rested. Her ability to get the best from our team and those that assisted us was a key factor in our ability to save 98% of casualties who, who arrived at our unit with a pulse. In this context, I would ask you to reflect on a few questions. None, I hasten to add, which can constitute a formal homework assignment. When you think back on the challenges of your training, what strengths have you discovered in yourself? And which of these have brought you the most personal satisfaction? Are you humble enough to allow other team members to compensate for your weaknesses? Are you aligning your future so that you can continue to build on leverage these strengths as you move forward in your career? From personal experience, I can tell you that the time you spend doing this type of self-appraisal will be rewarded many times over it will pay tremendous dividends. As you move forward in the increasingly complex work of healthcare, you will succeed or fail based on your ability to get the best from yourself 
but even more importantly, from those of whom you work and lead. Time spent getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of your team members will be well rewarded in personal and professional satisfaction, and most importantly, it will be of great benefit to your patients. There is a Chief Duggar in your future. Will you be able to recognize her and align her talents for the maximum benefit of your team, and more importantly, the care of your patients? What does this all have in common? There are many ways you can look at leadership and teamwork. The framework that has been most effective for me is to challenge the team to practice the principles of a high reliability organization. There are five critical elements to producing high reliability. The first is being preoccupied with failure. This might sound counterintuitive, but it means that no matter how carefully you prepare, in complex systems like medicine, things will go wrong. Highly reliable teams are constantly on the lookout for sources of failure and to identify them at the lowest possible amplitude before serious complications occur. Vigilance is a virtue and complacency a sin. The second element is integrity and accountability. This is more than personal integrity. It's objectively facing facts, even brutal facts, head on, so you can honestly assess the performance of the team and address any shortcomings. Highly reliable teams are never content and welcome rapid cycle feedback as a primary source of improvement. The third element is trust. Everyone must trust that team members understand their role and are proficient and reliable in accomplishing it. Trust is the key to effective communication. If you compare the best and worst teams that you've been a part of, I'd be willing to bet that a key difference was the level of trust among team members. Fourth element is mutual respect. Good leaders understand that each member, no matter what position in the hierarchy, can bring value to the team. Chief Duggar had never been to medical or business school, but she demonstrated PhD level knowledge in organizational performance. There's enormous power in treating junior members as equals. I vividly remember when a staff surgeon asked me, a junior resident, my opinion about a procedure late one night in the OR. Being treated as an equal made me want to be his equal and to live up to his expectations. One final story that links the fourth and fifth elements. After that first mass casualty, we transferred the five Marines to the combat support hospital in Baghdad via helicopter. In our drive to constantly improve, we called the following morning to find out if we had missed any injuries, if there were any suggestions for improvement. Having sent the patients fully resuscitated, stable, and warm, we were stunned to hear that the patients arrived cold, coagulopathic, and required re-resuscitation. We got our team together and quickly surmised that even though it was a short 25-minute flight and around 110 degrees in the shade, convection currents in the back of the open helicopter were cooling the patients despite being transported with both wool and space blankets. We started brainstorming how to keep the patients warm. We talked for about 15 minutes trying to come up with a solution, but to no avail. Finally, from the back of the tent, a voice said, body bags. There was a stunned silence and one of our emergency docs derisively said, we're not giving up on these patients. The voice, and I couldn't see who it was, said, no, I mean use body bags like a sleeping bag. Put the patient and their blankets inside. We made a prototype with a hole for egress of the vent tubing with a red cross on the chest area of the bag to ID the contents as a live patient and not remains. Long story short, it worked fabulously. Patients actually arrived warmer. We shared the solution throughout Iraq and Afghanistan and now there are commercial ver uh, versions available. We called our invention the Takatum Transport System but it rapidly became known as the Hot Pocket. So who was the voice? Who had the idea? It was a young Navy corpsman. Everyone matters and deserves respect, which leads me to my last point, psychological safety. That corpsman felt comfortable enough to speak up. He felt that his idea would be treated fairly and considered just like all other ideas that came up during that meeting. As the officer in charge, I had worked hard to make sure everyone knew that each team member was critically important to our success and that I needed each of them to function at the top of their game. Psychological safety is the basis for outstanding team performance. Team members feel that what they contribute is valued, and the environment is conducive to open, peer-like dialogue. Without the risk of humiliation, they will exceed your expectations and make, as this young corpsman did, important contributions to the success of the team. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote from a previous Vice Chief of Naval Operations. The top leaders inspire their teams to perform at or near their theoretical limits, and by making their team stronger, they relentlessly chase best ever performance. They study every text, they try every method, seize every moment, 
and expend every effort. They ceaselessly communicate, train, test, and challenge their teams. They are toughest on themselves. They routinely seek out feedback and are ready to be shown their errors in the interest of learning and getting better. Those teams are not interested in discussing or hovering around the pass-fail line. They are not interested in the rules-based approach to business. They are shooting ever higher toward a standard of excellence. As you begin your medical career, you have enormous resources at your disposal, including new cutting-edge therapies emerging every day based on an understanding of the genome that your professors and I could have never anticipated when we graduated. While this should be a source of enormous confidence, nothing will be more important to your success and your ability to provide state-of-the-art care to your patients than your ability to harness the power of all who work alongside you. Remember, an individual can make a difference, but only a team can make a miracle. And this is especially true in medicine. Congratulations, graduates, and best wishes for personal and professional success. As we say in the Navy, bravo Zulu. Well done. Good afternoon, Dr. Halpern, Rabbi Krupka, Dean Nadler, Dr. Kessler, Dr. Pontario, other distinguished faculty, our commissioned officers, family, and guests. Thank you for joining us for this year's military pinning ceremony of our graduates. These graduates <clears throat> will have the opportunity to serve their country in countless ways. Some of them will deploy to combat zones to help our troops who are on the front lines of the battlefield. There, they will care for the men and women who have risked their lives to preserve our freedom here at home. Some of them will be mobilized to support humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations, both in the United States and abroad, as we are seeing right now with the COVID-19 response. Indeed, as they leave from this place, they will immediately start fulfilling their dual role as military officer and physician. I did want to make sure we acknowledge and thank the military families. I thank you greatly for sharing your sons, your daughters, husbands, wives, and parents with our country. To the graduates, you have made the ultimate sacrifice in giving your lives to your country. So I thank you today. I wish you all the best in your military careers. The opportunities to serve and to lead are limitless. As officers in the Army, you are required to take an oath of office. You will retake this oath each time you are promoted because each new rank you obtain comes with a new set of responsibilities and demands that are beyond what is expected of you as a physician. Listen carefully to the words of that oath. I urge you to remember that in the military, we are not serving a political party. We are not serving any particular politicians. And we do not serve any particular man or woman. But rather, we are serving the Constitution of the United States. And we are protecting our flag and the freedom that we so enjoy. The pinning ceremony is a military custom that commemorates an officer either being commissioned or being promoted from one rank to the other. Today, you are being promoted to the rank of captain. At this time, we will proceed with the oath of office as we promote three officers. Second Lieutenant, Jennifer Arana Vazquez. Second Lieutenant, Erica Bucky and Second Lieutenant Morgan Andreessen. First, we have Second Lieutenant Jennifer Arana Vasquez. Second Lieutenant Arana Vasquez, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Jennifer Arana Vasquez. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully, discharge the duties, discharge the duties, of the office upon which, of the office upon which, I am about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Jennifer will be pinned by her husband, Captain Aaron Fernandez. Sir, thank you for your service. Thank you. Jennifer Arana Vasquez immigrated to the United States from the country of El Salvador at the age of nine and grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland. She attended the University of Maryland, College Park, and majored in general biology and biological anthropology with a minor in French. At the University of Maryland, she worked for a women's health clinic that served the uninsured and underinsured women of Prince George's County, where she worked as an interpreter, medical assistant, and administrative assistant. While a student at New York Medical College, she became the student clinical director of La Casita de la Salud. NYMC's student-run clinic. Among other projects, she spearheaded a summer research project focused on developing a strategic plan for the clinic, whose aim was to evaluate the organization and operations of the clinic to better serve its community. She is happily married to her high school sweetheart, Aaron, for eight years, and recently welcomed a newborn son, Gabriel. Following graduation, she will be reporting to Eisenhower Army Medical Center at Fort Gordon, Georgia, to begin her family medicine residency training. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Captain Jennifer Arana Vasquez, United States Army. Captain Arana Vasquez will now share a few words. Thank you. The proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, has truly come to resonate so much in my life. I'd like to thank my family here and in El Salvador especially my mother, Reina, and my father, Manuel, my brother, Nelson, and my husband for their unconditional love and support through this. My academic family, especially the amazing deans and professors here at NYMC, whose support and guidance have led us through this day. And my inspirational family, including countless providers, Dr. Tanya, and patients who have taught me so much in my training. I would not have made it this far if it wasn't for each and every one of your support. Thank you, and I look forward to paying it forward. Next, we have Second Lieutenant Erica Bucky. Second Lieutenant Bucky, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Erica Bucky. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully, discharge the duties, discharge the duties, of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Do you put your hand down? Erica will be pinned by her fiance, Juan, Carlos Martinez. Erica grew up in Egan, Minnesota. After completing high school, she attended Williams College in Massachusetts, where she earned an undergraduate degree in environmental science 
with a concentration in public health. She competed with the women's swimming team throughout her four years of college, serving as captain during her senior year. After graduating, she spent a year for clinical research with Hospital for Special Surgery. Upon graduation from medical school, she will be pursuing a career in pediatrics at Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Captain Erica Bucky. Captain Bucky will now share a few words. I would like to take a moment to thank my role models, my dad, retired Air Force Captain Mark Bucky, and my grandpa, retired Navy Commander Eric Witt, as well as my mom, JoLynn, my siblings, Aaron and Wyatt, and my fiance, Juan Carlos, including number, numerous uncounted members of my family for their encouragement and support of my decision to serve our country. Last, we have Second Lieutenant Morgan Andreessen. Second Lieutenant Andreessen, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Morgan Andreessen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will, I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully, discharge the duties, discharge the duties, of the office upon which, of the office upon which, I am about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. You may put your hand down. Morgan will be pinned by his father, Mr. Joseph, Andreessen. Morgan Andreessen was born and raised in Middletown, New York. After high school, he attended the University at Buffalo, where he received a Bachelor of Science in Biology, graduating summa cum laude. He was also inducted into the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. Upon starting medical school, Morgan was inspired to follow the, in the footsteps of his grandfather, father, and older brother who have all served in the various branches of, of the military. He will be completing his residency training in internal medicine at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Captain Morgan Andreessen. Captain Andreessen will now share a few words. Thank all of the people who helped me reach this point in my medical career to my family, particularly my mother and father. Thank you for your continued support, encouragement, and guidance over the years. Thank you to all my professors here at New York Medical College and all of the clinical faculty who have taught me so much. And to my wonderful classmates and friends, and especially Lizzie, this has been an incredible four years with you all. Gentlemen, it has been my honor to officiate over this pinning ceremony and I thank the NYMC administration for entrusting me with this awesome responsibility. Thanks once again to all who came out to this ceremony to make it a truly special event for our distinguished officers. Dear class of 2020 fellow doctors, you have made me so proud. I'd like to share a quote from one of my very favorite child childhood doctors. Dr. Seuss, of course, that is. Uh, you're off to great places. Today's your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Class of 2020, get on your way. The world awaits you. You've made us all so proud and congratulations. Hey guys, it's Dr. Lento. I hope my homemade haircut didn't confuse you. <clears throat> Seriously though, I just wanna congratulate you all on your graduation this year and actually welcome you as colleagues. 
I also want to wish you good luck as you enter your residencies during this interesting and perhaps difficult time. I look forward to crossing paths with you in the near future, and I want to wish you well. Be safe. Congratulations. Hello, class of 2020. I'm Karen Murray, Dean of Admissions and former Dean of the Branch House. Yay, Branch House! Congratulations um, and best wishes on your graduation. You guys have to remember your class is one for the record books. It's gonna be a part of New York Medical College history. It's gonna be a part of world history. You're gonna be leaders in your field. And I'm so absolutely proud of you guys. Again, congratulations and best wishes. Congratulations to the class of 2020 with a special shout out to those graduating peer learning partners who I will miss tremendously next year. Good luck to all. Hi, we're here from Health Services. We're pulling down our mask to wish you the very, very, very best. Uh, we, we just wish you good health always and forever. And don't ever forget, remember to always get your flu shot. <laughs> Several medical schools have had virtual graduation ceremonies. None that we are aware of have attempted a hooding ceremony. After tracking regalia being delivered all around the country, we gathered over several sessions live on Zoom with students and their family and friends for a brief history lesson, an instruction on hooding, and a demonstration of the process. Then, with some direction, Students, one by one, proceeded with their hooding. Students, we welcome you into the profession.
Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Joanna Pesolano. I am the OBGYN clerkship co-director and an assistant dean in the Office of Student Affairs. First of all, I would like to say congratulations to the graduates. You have worked hard for this day and you deserve to be proud. Remember that what you have earned is the privilege and the power to make a difference in the lives of your patients in little ways and in big ways. So use it well. Stay enthusiastic, stay curious, stay positive, and you will be happy. And you will be the type of physician your patients deserve. I wish you all the best of everything. Now I will announce the students who in addition to the rigorous curriculum of medical school, elected to do additional work in an area of personal interest the areas of concentration. The following students have received a distinction in biomedical research. Justine Anderson, Yaritzi Astudio, Meba Bizwa, Leora Busi, David Cohen, Colin Edwards, Ariel Figueroa, Irva Khan, Donna Ku. Nikathan Kumar, Joyce Ambiziwo Tiapo, Matthew McIntyre, Alexandra Nee, Gladys Palaguachi, Alexander Poliak, Sonica Reddy, Sarah Spiegel, and Spencer Weintraub. Distinction in Medical Ethics, Catherine Carone. Distinction in Medical Education, Marcus Fu, Samuel Boderman, Catherine Harwood, Amethyst Sultani, Samantha Veramontes, Megan Uwasa, and Adele Shinoy. And Distinction in Global and Population Health, Tanya Abraham, Jacqueline Din, Irva Khan, and Alana Margulies. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Jennifer Kessler, and I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Education at New York Medical College. It is my honor to congratulate all of you today on your tremendous achievement, particularly during these unprecedented times. Thank you for allowing me and all of the faculty to play such a significant role in your training. And thank you to your families and loved ones for supporting you throughout this journey. You are all joining the workforce at a time when your skills are needed more than ever. I am so proud of your collective intellect, compassion, grit, and resilience. What's more, I'm confident in your abilities to enter the front lines of medicine to care for and even more importantly, comfort your patients. After all, medicine is about people. I ask that you remember to listen to all of your patients carefully, hear their stories, and incorporate this information into their care. For, as Dr. William Osler remarked, the good physician treats the disease, the great physician treats the patient who has the disease. And now I have the tremendous honor of introducing the graduates who have earned the Doctor of Medicine degree with my colleague and friend, Dr. Mill Etienne. Tanya Abraham. Kemi Dayu Adarbigbe. Uzo Amaka Aguboku Ode Emena. Mohammed Alzubai. Taolin Aman. Justine Anderson. Julian Andrade. Evan Angelis. Jennifer Arana Vasquez. Yaritzi Astudio. Jared Atchison. Ida Aziz Kanian, 
Nicholas Batcher. Agnes Bacopoulos. Tan Yu Bai. Brianna Balansai. Carmine Balarano. Andrew Becker. Farhana Begum. Basha Behrman. Natalie Bertolotti. Maida Biswas. Michael Blotner. Samuel Boderman. Chloe Bolin. Bevan Bonhomme. Leora Bicey. Alicia Brady. Katie Brown. Rachel Bubbly. Erica Bucky. Fatma Bukhari. Carolyn Berkey. Eleanor Burstein. Tavia Bicey. Alessandra Cabrera. Matthew Capustin. Aaron Carraher. Catherine Carome. Bavnit Chada. Ying Chen. Charlotte Ching. Shilpin Choksi. Danielle Cirillo. Kate Citron. David Cohen. Philip Conkling. Emily Convery. Neil Christopher Daxla. Gwendolyn Daly. Kristen Darden. Tolawalashe Davies. Jacqueline Din. Two Din. Brittany Dodson. James Dragonette. Ashanti Dunmeyer. Crystal DuPont. Colin Edwards. Nicole Eden. Morgan Andreessen. Benjamin Epstein. Cassandra Irazo. Andres Estella. Brianna Evans. Joel Fandel. Lauren Farmer. David Fernandez. Ariel Figueroa. Ryan Finkel. Kyle Flattery. Andrew Fleming. 
Kara Fleming. Chase Fong. Ruchi Marcus Fu. Patrick Frangos. Thomas Freshenau. Baruch Goldstein. Reed Goodman. Aliza Graby. Rachel Graham. Leka Grandi. Ilana Grant. Dana Green. Brittany Grow. Kenneth Goober. Priyanka Hardikar. Catherine Harwood. Mashfiq Hassan. Gregory Hemingway. Amy Hirschberger. Michelle Hertzberg. Emily Hahn. Ian Hunter. Gregory Jew. Elizabeth Zhang. Ayodeji Jabril. Yiphak Cantor. Rowan Hall Kellner. Patrick Joseph Kennedy. Ryan Earl Kent. Irva Khan. Thomas Kimball. Scott Klein. Michael T. Cody. Maria Kananenko. Donna Ku. Nikathan Kumar. Daisy Ngwe Quende. Dennis Kwan. Lorna Lastovich. Adina Laufer. Christopher James Laurie. Ju Young Lee. Jessica Learn. Parker Michael Lewis. Fraulein Lee. Jennifer Lindelof. Aaron Litt. Kevin Liu. Michael Bowen Liu. Yevgeny Liveron. Lauren Taylor Locke. Catherine Ann Loftus. Brownwin Long. Monica Lopez Islas. Eileen Liu. Colby Brooke Madison. Ilana Green Margulis. Catherine Matthew. Joyce Mbizuo Tiapo. Matthew McIntyre. Abiniti 
Method. Stanislas Montfort. Alan Vivian Morris. Beth Hillary Motel. Adiel Monk. Charles Joseph Nagel. Alexandra Nee. Sophie Nicholas Henkin. Oluwadara Norlis. Anne Norris. Alexander Ogilvie. Nkechi Okoro. Precious Okunbor. Evelyn Hasting Orlando. Olayode Owade. Daoud Pak. Carlos Roberto Palacios. Gladys Palaguachi. Aparna Panja. Ruan Parakrama. Mary Paul. Ilana Leia Paul. Julia Pazniokas. Sai Pentiala. Ashley Melissa Poland. Alexander Poliak. Kendall Taylor Presti. Sonika Reddy. Brendan Rooney. Jessica Rowe. Julia Rosenberg. Ilya Ribkin. Cyrus Safinia. Diana Sanchez. Hannah Sant. Tanya Schiff. Ilana Sarah Schoenbrunn. Maggie Semeka. Parul Shanker. Adele Kara Shanoi. Alyssa Sherwill. Elizabeth Jane Zimmerman. Alexandra Elaine Snyder. Amethyst Sultani. Xianyu Song. Mia Ashley Spad. Sarah Beth Spiegel. James Ware Stevenson. Ava Jean Strobel. Abel Suarez Mazon. Catherine Sweeney. Vivian Tao. Brian Taylor. Paul Tesserero. Brianna Caracillo Perio. Haley Thompson. Jessica Lynn Tilzer. Jennifer Elise Tornay. Ryan Tressel. Melissa Rose Chai. 
Giovanna Farutza, Gabriela Velazquez, John Villegas, Samantha Viramontes, Akshay Wadera, Kathy Juan, Nell Weber, Spencer Frederick Weintraub, Benjamin Weistrop, Alexandra Wright, Jenny Wu, Kazen Yao, Akshita Yarabothula, Suma Yara Peretti, Edward E, Natalie Yu, Kimberly Yuang, Megan Yuasa, Stephanie Yoon. I will now administer the Hippocratic Oath. In the medical profession, it has been a custom for more than 2,000 years that no one may be admitted to its honors who has not first expressly taken upon himself or herself its obligations. Although the ancient Greek language is replaced by modern English, we still find no nobler words than the most ancient in which to hand down the tradition of our college. Therefore, on behalf of your elders, I call upon the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine to take as we have been taken over the, before you the oath attributed to Hippocrates. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine please rise and repeat after me? I also invite any physicians in the audience who wish to retake the oath to also rise and join us. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. That I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor. That into whatsoever home I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick and the well, to the utmost of my power. And that I will hold myself aloof from wrong and from corruption and from tempting others to vice. That I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients and the prevention of disease. And will give no drugs and perform no operation for a criminal purpose and far less suggest such a thing. That whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men and women, which is not fitting to do so, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise. 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 And in proportion as I am faithful to this oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be forsworn. Good and loving God, on this afternoon of commencement week, we wonder. We wonder about the next step in life's journey of these young doctors. There'll be new places for learning and new parts of the country. Assembled here remotely, yet somehow connected, there's a feeling of restlessness while we daydream. Well, we already know they're talented, wisdom and imagination and understanding and compassion. It's in a great part because of divine providence. But this afternoon on the threshold of their healing ministry, these newly hooded doctors confess that there is still more, more to learn and more to live. Bless them with humility to accept our congratulations. Brighten their souls by knowing how proud we are of all they've done. From this afternoon onward, Fill them with a blessed assurance of your holy presence as they assume stewardship of healing and health and wholeness. For this and for everything else we ask, all your good people say, amen. Thank you for being part of the New York Medical College family. We are proud of all of your accomplishments and we wish you to stay safe, 
continue to reach out to each other and to be able to support each other throughout your careers. Congratulations. Best of luck to everyone. Keep up the good work. Hi, class of 2020 from Student Mental Health and Wellness. I wanted to thank you so much for your inspiring dedication, perseverance, and cooperation during this um, crazy time that we've all lived through. You really are um, great folks and um, look forward to you joining the profession. Um, congratulations, thank you. To the class of 2020, congratulations to all of you. I send you all best wishes. It has been an honor to work with you these past four, four years. Best of luck to you. Love housing. Hello and congratulations to the class of 2020. Wow, what a four years it's been and has it ever ended with a bang. Uh, I wanna say how much uh, I had appreciated the time that I had to, got to spend with you and covering pharmacology uh, uh, over the years, uh, as well as uh, other interactions that I had even way back in the neuroscience course when I taught neuropeptides. But I think I'll just uh, end with a quick note to say that uh, you really well deserve uh, this, uh, uh, this degree that you're getting today, and we look to you for the future uh, to actually serve mankind in ways that perhaps uh, none of us had really fully anticipated the magnitude uh, of the uh, uh, problems that we'll be confronting uh, in the very near future. And have that said, I'll just note that today we're at a time when we really look forward to pharmacology uh, uh, as a major, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, tool in terms of overcoming our current uh, events. And we will certainly be in a position to uh, administer those drugs. So again, congratulations and best wishes to you all. Congratulations, class of 2020. You did it. I'm very happy to have been part of your journey. I know a few of you may not agree, but I had a great time. But in all seriousness and all this chaos going on in the world right now, don't forget to take care of yourself. And don't forget about us here at New York Medical College. When you get a chance, drop us a line and let us know how you're doing. Take care, class of 2020. Class of 2020 at New York Medical College, congratulations. This is Sean Tetrati, the chairman and director of OBGYN at New York Medical College. I wanted to leave you with these thoughts as you go out as a class uh, that has never happened in the modern history, having experienced the largest pandemic that affected the ending part of your education here at New York Medical College. You will live through what has happened in your region in New York City. And I have no doubt that if you look at the silver lining, this will become the defining moment of what will shape your career as a physician, as a human being, and as a contributor to humanity. It will make you resilient. It will make you think about what happened. It will make you think about what the strengths of healthcare are and what are some of the areas that you can contribute to You'll become a better, more compassionate physician, and we couldn't be more proud of what this class will do and will represent. All the best and congratulations. On behalf of myself and Dr. William Frischman, the Chairman Emeritus of the Department of Medicine, I want to congratulate the class of 2020 on your graduation from New York Medical College. I must say I don't recall much of my own medical school graduation, but I have no doubt that you will never forget yours. I do remember being told by one of my professors that uh, I was now transitioning from being a medical student to being a student of medicine, which was his way of saying that the practice of medicine is truly a process of lifetime learning. New York Medical College has prepared you well. Be compassionate, be honest, put your patients first, and undoubtedly you will succeed. And if you have a moment from time to time, please let us know how you're doing. All the best. Hi, everyone. Kathy Nimola, the Director of the Clinical Skills and Simulation Center and Senior Director of Competency-Based Assessment. I am so proud of all of you, and I wish you a heartfelt congratulations. It's been such a pleasure getting to know each of you as you walk through the doors at the Clinical Skills Center. I know you all have a bright future. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. Hi, I'm John Pesolano, uh, Director of Student Affairs. I just want to congratulate each and every one of you and thank you for helping us put this ceremony together. My family and I feel like we've gotten to know you so much better over the course of these recording sessions, and I hope you guys like it. Best of luck. 
We worked countless days, we worked countless nights, told ourselves we're gonna save lives. And all I know is all I've ever known to do good in this world, I can't do it alone. So I'm here with you. each other we save each other